Great. Hi, everybody. Nice seeing you all again. Thank you so much. Um, as you know, we have the um, incredible filmmakers from the Starling, um, Ted Melfi and Kimberly Quinn. Um, uh, Kimberly and Ted, thank you guys so much for making this beautiful film. I think we all agree that it's just such an incredible portrayal of, of you know, a marriage, which is also very real. And I think most people don't see that on the big screen. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to launch in and I'll ask everybody ask a question. If we have any extra time, we'll go through and see if anybody else has anybody extra to ask. Um, our first question I'm going to start with is Tessa Smith from Mama's Geeky. Hey guys, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm super curious. So like Melissa McCarthy, she's hilarious, but she's so good in this dramatic role. And what inspired you to kind of like, did you reach out to her? How did that casting go about? And Oh, well, um, I guess I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the original script, the, the roles were swapped. The gender roles were swapped. And Melissa's character was, was Jack, and Jack's character was Melissa, was Chris O'Dowd. Um, and, and, you know, after reading it a bunch of times, I thought that was, like, super cliched and, like, you know, like, this one over here is way stronger than me any given day. So, um, like, it just didn't make sense to me. And so we switched it. And then the minute we switched it, we, I thought, it's Melissa. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know anyone who can do what she does, the ability to navigate comedy and drama in such a like natural way. She's just a natural. Um, and so I, I, I called her about it and she basically said yes on the phone. Without even, I just told her the story and she said yes. And I said, no, no, you should read it. Uh, and she goes, no, no, okay, sure, I'll read it. But anyway, she's very funny and um, she's heartbreaking in the movie and yet funny at the same time and is able to navigate both worlds in such an elegant way. Um, I can't imagine anyone else, you know, doing it. And and I know we know her for years from St. Vincent and, yeah. and just life. She's so relatable. So I, I just want to say human, but, you know, I feel like every single woman and man can relate to her mm -hmm. in a way that like maybe, a, you know, a more dramatic actor would be, you know, because she softens herself with her comedy. It's just like, you're just drawn in. She's amazing. She's so good in this. So good. Thank you so much, Tessa. Our next question is going to come from Tobin Walsh from The Good Bad Dad. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, so the one question I'm getting from my followers when I put up the trailer was, should my kids watch this? Or should what? how should I prepare my kids to take in this content since there's heavier subjects? So I wanted to get your response to that. Um, go ahead. Uh, well, it depends on how old the kid is. I mean, that's a case by case thing. I certainly wouldn't let a four year old. I mean, I, I don't know. But like, I think um, I think kids at 10, 11, 12 would, would A, find it funny, right? And B, understand the sense of, uh, of what the film's trying to do. It's trying to create hope and love. And it's about a marriage staying together. And I think that's an important message for kids. Like, you know, they want their mommy and daddy to stay together, and that doesn't always happen, and it's sad. And, it, and, it, and it's, it happens, it happens and, and sometimes it's right and sometimes it's not right, but it happens and I think it's nice to see a message where the couple fights to stay together. So the kids have the hope that, oh, my mom and dad can fight. Through all the rough times. And they can work battles. it out. Yeah. You know, also the movie, it doesn't show, we don't land too much on the baby and the whole thing. And so that's really kind of in the, background of the whole thing so so for kids to be able to see their parents deal with a very hard situation and give the child hope that what he just said is that you'll make it no matter what I think would actually bring safety a, a safety feeling to the child as opposed to worrying that if something bad happened your parents might fight and split up and whatever um i i think it's a good thing yeah we've heard from a lot of friends that have watched it with their kids and they said the kids just totally responded to the film and the bird you know there's so many other elements that really just like uh, you know the bird represents everything to fight with nature and the whole thing i it's witty i i'm all for kids watching it i don't think it would be a problem no, I appreciate it. My kids watched it with me and I, 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 I agree with your sentiment exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tobin. Our next question is going to come from Robin from Mom the Magnificent. <laughs> I love these names. Good names. Such good names. <laughs> I don't want a name like yeah. that. 
Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. And thank you for this beautiful, raw, moving film. I really enjoyed it. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, the original script, the roles were flipped. So, and it's the husband taking time out for his mental health. Why was that an important decision and how did that come about? What, the, swip the swapping of the genders? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've said this before, but like, I-, I Why I, was it important? That was important. I, I, I've been surrounded by strong women my whole life. My, my mom was a single mom for, for a while and um, I married a very strong woman and everyone around me, I have, I have a daughter who tells me what to do every day. And I'm surrounded by strong women since the dawn of time and I grew up that way. And so I felt uh, instantly like um, the original script was like kind of uh, untrue. Like I, I'm the one in the ER saying I'm gonna die. She's not, right? So I'm the one who can't handle it day by day, she can. So like that was natural for me. Um, and so I, I just felt like it was the thing to, the thing to do. I think, and, 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 not, and not a cliche and honest and more in line with what really happens in life. The women are holding this whole world together in my estimation and the men are like shooting it up. It's also, I think, really important because we don't ever really see vulnerable men in vulnerable positions and being honest and truthful with their, you know, place in life. Society has put so much on their shoulders to like manage the world in some fashion. And that's failure. And it's it's but, you know, in some regards, very that's a big burden on a man's shoulders from the time they're born. So, you know, they do feel, they do have issues. They do. And to be able to see a man go through this journey and make it okay. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, it's shocking that there's still a stigma. It's, it's shocking that there's still a stigma of um, getting help. Like there's uh, the newsflash guys still think, well, that's, I'm not going to get help. I don't, I don't need help. Guys still think that. Yeah. Thank you. I thought Chris did it such justice and played it beautifully. And I really appreciate your point of view. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. Um, our next question is going to come from Kathy Cupkit from Bel Air Mommy. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. The movie was fantastic. So I wanted to know um, when you received the actual um, dialogue and, and how you guys were doing it, how did the movie resonate with you? And what would you like your audience goers to learn? I know you've touched upon that a little bit, but what would you like them to walk away with? Uh, what resonated most with me was about a couple trying to work it out. So it was about trying to succeed and get to the other side, right? And so like the, what ha the event and the tragic event that happens in the film is almost too much to bear, right? So that's very analogous to what the world has been going through in the last two years, right? It's just very, it's too much to bear, right? So every one of us, every one of you, everyone in the world has lost someone over the last two years or know someone. And there's just this great sense of sadness and loss. And it's no mystery that depression, anxiety, suicide, drug use, everything is through the roof. It's not a mystery, it's just not facts and numbers. So that, that's what initially drew me to the script was like getting through to the other side. So the message of the film, um, maybe you want to. I, you know, it's easy to walk away when things get tough. That's easy, you know, and to see someone have, see someone stay and go through the journey and go through the pain to get to the other side, which we don't see often. We, a lot of us quit. A lot of us say I'm done and don't, stay. And when you stay, I mean, and you love and you are patient and you feel and you have the pain that you need to experience in your life on the other side of that is healing. And so the message is to have faith and mm -hmm. stay and it's, you'll be all right. And you can get this hope and, and, and we can get you can get through. There's hope on the other side. There's okay. hope on the other side. You don't always have to run in fear and walk away and quit. You, you know, like my therapist would always tell me, 
I should maybe I shouldn't say this, but <laughs> she would always tell me, "Everywhere you go, there yeah. you'll be." And I went, "What does that mean?" You're not supposed to. Oh, I can't curse. Everywhere you go, <laughs> there you'll be. And I was like, "What?" I'm like, "Oh." So she said, "If you don't work it out with this person, you're gonna be working out with the next person, or the next person. If you don't work it out with your mom, you'll be working out with your father." We have the same. At therapist. some point, we were saying, "Well, we did." She told me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> at some point you have to work it out right and so if you just bob around avoiding it guess what everywhere you go there you're going to be you may as well work it out with the person you love then the, then the next person you think you love yeah then walking away and you know because you love the person so work it out stay figure it out because it's just going to show up in your life ne the next person or the next situation it's not going away it's your problem <laughs> It's like, I mean, look, there's a, okay. there's a caveat, right? I mean, there's you times you gotta get the get out, right? We all know that there are times out abuse or whatever it is. We're not advocating no, no, no. you stay. There's times to bail, but a no, lot no, of understandable, yes. To be clear, but I love what you said, and I'm gonna use that. I'm actually gonna say that to my sex. I'm a single mom, so it's a, I. But that's important because there? everywhere you go, there you'll be, and that's that's everyone that's thinks, phenomenal. Everyone thinks the problem someone else. Yeah. Everybody, the entire world thinks the problem. Someone, the problem is us. You are yeah. you are the cause and the and and you are the the drive of your life. You and if you don't work it out with you, you're never going to work it out with anyone else. And I just had to say that to my daughter like two days ago, you know, because I because I recognized that she was having the same problem with three different people, <laughs> and I went, hmm. <laughs> I think. We might need to look at the source. So, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we're ranting. But... Yeah, we're going. I loved it. Thank you so much. I'm extremely appreciative. Thank you. I think it's very true. It's much harder to look within. It's much easier just to point your finger and blame everyone else. Um, but it's a very good message and a very good moral for us to relate to our own kids. Yes. Um, our next question is going to come from Amanda Taylor from Guide for Moms. Hi guys, I loved it too. I mean, it was such a touching film and um, part of it was filmed during the pandemic, I believe, right? Um, I just wanted to know how it felt on set, you know, uh, filming something about grieving and loss when so many of us were going through that. that yeah, well, well, well um, most of it was filmed before the, right before the pandemic. Right before. And then, um, all of post was done pretty much in the pandemic. Um, in that space of the pandemic, we, uh, one of our visual effects supervisors died um, of COVID. My mom passed away. Like all kinds of things happened. Um, and then we did another reshoot, actually full blown in the pandemic. Um, and it's what what to say about it. You're all wearing masks. You're all being six feet apart, and you really felt um a privilege that you could actually get something done but also a sense of sadness that you couldn't do it as you normally would do it where human connection for actors is everything, everything. Like, it's everything you know and and human human connection with the crew the crew adds entire you know so much energy and love and you know hard work to a set that that family starts to feel separated and disjointed is not is just not the same um in our reshoot, Melissa McCarthy was in Australia and Chris O'Dowd was in LA. And the opening scene of the movie, she's in Australia, he's in LA. The opening scene when they're painting the crib for the first time, painting the baby's room for the first time, there are two different continents. And I'm directing via Zoom. And then I cut it in the middle and put it together. And you're like, wow, no, that's possible. Like, um, and so it wasn't fun, but it taught me, like, oh, you know what? The message of the movie, everything is possible. Right. I agree. No, it's 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 amazing. Like, because we did get to experience both, you know. And since we, after that, we have also experienced other filmmaking with during the pandemic. But it's uh, it's it's it has its benefits because we are learning new things and new ways of operating and knowing and understanding that oh, we we can save money by zooming. We can do right. Like all that is good, but. The downside is the human connection and the touch and the isolation and all of that. And we are human, so we actually need that. It's important. Um, so 
get it wherever you can. I guess that's yeah. But listen, no one, no one, no one's missing getting in traffic. Go do yeah, press, exactly. Go that's do a, like the go upside. do a press junket. Like you, you're not missing coming to a press junket, and you know, like it's all day. It's okay. Getting... It's okay to have background. It's like it's like oh okay, but you know, we got to balance that. Yeah. Or having to wear pants. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That is some movie magic right there that you guys you guys pulled off in that opening scene. Um, yeah. Our next question is going to come from Monica Young from My Life is a Journey. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, my question is, this is a really triggering uh, uh, subject, you know, losing a baby. And the movie could have been so dark. However, you have some humor on it. So I want to know, how did you keep that balance between the sadness, but also trying to make people laugh and enjoy the uh, images with the birth and everything like that? Yeah, look, I, 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 my philosophy about um, these kind of films, I mean, look, they already made this film uh, the other way. They, it's called Rabbit Hole, right? So they made that version of it. Um, I don't think all of us would be talking if this movie were Rabbit Hole. So um, I personally think comedy is the way in to allow an audience to let their guard down, right? To feel safe, right? And then you're able to, to deal with and express deeper harder themes. Like how could you make a movie about this subject matter and not have humor is, is, is more the question for me. How could you do that? And how do you do that? How is it possible to make a movie where a child is, goes through something unfathomable and come out the other side? Um, it's, 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 it's putting enough comedy in and then, and then letting them meet in the middle. The comedy is not meant to be funny. We're not playing jokes. She gets hit by a bird, she falls. Like I've been attacked by birds, it's painful. And the drama, yeah. yeah. And the drama, <laughs> the drama can't be too dramatic. It can't yeah. be too dire. It's all kind of got to kind of meet in the middle, right? Um, and then you just hope you cast comedic actors in dramatic roles. That's the key. I would say this is, you know, not to float your boat, but um, <laughs> this is his forte. I should record this. You guys record this? This is his forte, <laughs> you know. Ted has that magic thing where he can take a really hard subject and situation and, and allow the audience to keep their heart open and keep their ears open and not, and, and allow them to feel, you know, it's probably also years of me being a dramatic actor and being too dramatic. And he's like, okay, we need a little comedy here. <laughs> Yeah, but if you think about it, like even St. Vincent, it's about an alcoholic Vietnam vet whose wife dies of Alzheimer's, basically. Yeah. So, so it was the perfect balance. Yeah, you got you to figure out. It's not easy. I mean, it's so just, his writing, the vision, the music, the style, the tone, all of it has to come together. And, and people admire it because it's very hard to achieve. It's very, you know, it just is. It's I, I, yeah. It's I don't think it is because but it's your thing. I don't think it's hard to achieve because I think it's life. Yeah. I um, think it's exactly how life is. I think it you, is how life. Melissa says yeah. this all the time. You laugh at a funeral and you're like, what the f am I laughing for? Yeah. And you cry at a wedding when you're not supposed to. Like that's life. It's true. And so if you ask me, Monica, it's just life. It's just 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 life. It's the life. It was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Our next question is going to come from um, Christina Patrizio from the Patrizios. Hi, thank you for being here with us today. Um, I'm curious, was this your first time working together as husband and wife? And what is it like? No, it's not our first time. Um, Kim is in. We, we've done every, every single thing together. We started the whole, the whole thing. thing. Back in 1999 and 2000, we made our first movie together. We were kids called Winding Roads yes. um, with Rachel Hunter and Adam Scott before anyone knew who these people were. Uh, in Missouri, we raised money, we raised 500 grand. We wrote it, he yeah. directed, I was in it. We, you know, we did the whole thing. But no, we work together all the time, um, whether it's writing, producing, acting, he's directing, whatever. Um, you know. It's mostly. We've done it's it. It's mostly good. Forever. Yeah, but he, you know, tries to tell me what to do. Yeah, you can't tell her what to do. The thing about it is, like, here's the thing. 
the, the hardest part is there's no directive. That's like, that's like, that's gone right away. There's no, no, that's there's, no tell, there's no telling you. Uh, I'm a very good person to work with. Yeah, she is. <laughs> the thing is about Kim, um, there's not much to say. Like she, she's fantastic and she knows what she's doing as an actor. She's been doing it for 20 something years. There's nothing much to say. When you have great actors, um, even if they are your wife, you, you let them be. I'm just thankful to be part of these great movies that Ted's in. And just because like, you know, if I can play the nurse in St. Vincent opposite Bill Murray, and if I can, you know, be opposite Kevin Costner as, you know, the redhead and the, you know, it's like, so the experience for me as a working actor is just hands down. And Ted is such an actor's director. I mean, we're joking right now, but he's such an actor's director. He just is so great. Everyone. Thank you. Yeah. We work together all the time. <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. That's a short answer. And you guys are like truly couple goals for the rest of us. Um, all right, we got two more questions left. So um, next is going to come from Joel from Daddy's Grounded. Oh, that's another great title. Daddy. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, my <laughs> wife's a flight attendant and I'm home with the kids. So that's our, <laughs> our shtick. Uh, first off, I want to say how much I enjoyed the movie. It was just amazing. I think it was perfectly cast. And along those lines, I'm curious what the process of casting went like, because I feel like each character, you, you hit on the nose with who was able to play the leads and the supporting the supporting roles uh well as, as we talked earlier the gender swap um the moment we swapped the gender I, I, I thought it was melissa right away and then when she said yes it's kind of like a it's kind of like dominoes or a house of cards like people love melissa mccarthy so much in 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 the world but in the acting community really she's beloved in the acting community um she's an amazing talent she's an amazing on set she's just such a positive uh, hopeful energy so when she said yes, it kind of all kind of just fell into place. I had seen, um, Kim and I had saw, did you see Chris O'Dowd? Yeah, Kim and I saw Chris O'Dowd on Broadway in Of Mice and Men. And holy crap, if you didn't, like you're horse. like, what, what was that? Like he just dramatically like was staggering and I couldn't get him out of my mind. And I had worked with him already. We had already done St. Vincent with him. So the man, Melissa said, yes, I said, it's Chris. It's Chris is the husband. So I called Chris and, and told him about the script and told him Melissa was in it. He goes, I, I want to read it right away. And then he said, yes. Um, I always knew Kim was going to play uh, Melissa and Chris's therapist. I, I always knew that from the beginning. And then um, Kevin Klein, uh, really hard to get. They, you know, he, they call him Kevin D. Klein in the film business. <laughs> Klein's everything. Um, but he, he, I sent him the script and uh, he read it, was really responded to it immediately and doesn't say yes to anything. And I told him Melissa's in it and Chris, and he's like, oh, well, they're very lovely. So um, he wanted to work with them. And then it just kind of, and then I just kind of went down a laundry list of who my favorite actors in the world are. And I said, oh, it'd be a dream to have David Diggs. I, I know it's not a big role. I don't, I wonder if he would say yes. And he said, yes. I said, oh, Loretta Devine I just, is Devine, is like the queen of the world. And then she said, yes. I'm like, how is this possible? And then Timothy Oliphant's a family friend of ours. And I thought, oh, and, and then Skylar Gisando. So it was just like this domino effect of like, A, everyone wanted to work with Melissa and love the source material. And B, um, people I loved and we got lucky. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, the script was pretty great. The script was great. The script was great. And, you know, in Hollywood, you don't always get a oh. script like this. Always, you, hardly ever. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah never really. No. And so if you can, if you, you're lucky enough to land on a script where uh, as actor, I mean, this is like an actor's script. It's like, oh my God, I get to, I get to cry. I get, I get to, to communicate, I get to feel. I, I get to do all this stuff. And, yeah, um, you know, it's it, it's just the perfect storm, you know, with all of it. The script is fantastic. And Ted's pretty great. great. I'm okay. Thank you. Our last question of the day is going to come from Shell from um, Not Quite Susie Homemaker. 
What's up? Hi. Thank you for being here and for such a beautiful movie. Um, I wanted to know, so the garden is obviously important so that she has this exposure to the starling, but it feels like a massive metaphor for her trying to grow and move forward. So I was wondering if you could speak to the importance of her working in the garden throughout the movie. Yeah, gardens represent new life. And, and um, she is mourning her, her old life. And she's mourning that. And I think she says to herself, uh, well, this is what it was for me. I, if I could just get something to grow again, if I could just get it to grow again, I'll be okay, right? And then the bird is doing the exact same thing. The bird is going, I only know a couple of things. I egg, I nest, I breed, I egg, I nest. And that bird breeds new life in that tree and becomes her catharsis and just keeps pecking at her. And what is that bird? That, that bird is basically what my therapist said, forcing Melissa to deal with herself. Pecking, peck. In life, you get peckers. And, and you need, it without, not peck, peck, but in life, you get peckers. <laughs> Let's tell you. I wasn't thinking well, that. Well, everyone, I saw some faces. In life, you get peckers, and the peckers are there to remind us, right? Stop, 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 deal, 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 deal. And that's what that bird is, and that's what that garden is, right? The bird's attacking, keeping her from, from having new life, and therefore it becomes her arch enemy. But the bird is actually there to help her. The bird is actually there to peck her until she stops and goes, wait a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to this, this Kevin Klein veterinarian, former psychiatrist. And we're going to kind of fall into a defunct therapy and I'm going to work it out. And at the end, I'm going to love that bird. And I'm going to release that bird and let that bird go because I'm now releasing my pain and the spirit of my child and all the things that I went through. Right. And then at the very end of the movie, the bird's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm pecking you anyway. It keeps coming. So it, that's, that's the message of it for me. And that's what the bird in the garden mean. And the great thing about the garden is it, it's subconscious. It's a subconscious it's not, she's not planning it, right? She's not like, okay, and then I'm going to do this and then that'll happen. This is, it's, 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 as my acting teacher would say, it's doing her. She's not doing it, right? So she goes to the garden out of frustration to fill her, but it leads her in the movie and she grows from it at, and she doesn't get ahead of the ideas or the growth she learns from it. Anyway, I'm getting too weird. All right. I'm just getting too actory and like, I, I I'm like, ooh, and then. Yeah. yeah. It's just a garden. It, it doesn't mean anything. It's not. <laughs> Thank really, you. I love and she gets some tomatoes at the end and that's, that's all she really wanted. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time this morning. We truly appreciate it. And thank you to Ted and Kimberly for this absolutely beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, as we know, the Starling is coming out in limited theaters on Friday the 17th and on Netflix on September 24th. So thank you guys so much. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.